John here guys and today we're talking about the reptile cloud 149 this is the latest in a long string of budget affordable Santa whoops that have come out and this one is very very notable there is I believe it's a kit that you put together that is the original cloud 149 uh, and this is the HD version, but they're basically the same once you get them put together. I don't know why they call this HD. There's nothing really HD about it other than you can carry an HD camera. And it comes with this HD camera GoPro Hero style mount. Uh, but this camera is not HD, it's analog. But it is meant for you to be able to carry an HD camera and carry it very, very smoothly. Now, these ducted quads are really good for that cinematic footage in tight quarters by having some protection um, so that if you're flying around uh, an indoor space or flying around soft targets, aka people, uh, you don't want to bump into them and have these whirling dervishes just you know carve up into somebody. So this really is a nice safety feature. Now, when I saw a few of these come with foam surrounding the ducks. I really thought that was kind of a gimmick, but now actually seeing and flying this, I realize the foam is not so much about protection of other objects, but it does add a good protection there. Um, when you bump into something, it's very nice and soft instead of these rigid ducks. But what it actually does, in addition to that protection that it involves for what you're hitting, it actually adds a lot of protection for the ducks themselves. These ducks are rigid, um, in order to hold their shape and so that they don't actually stop the prop from spinning if you do bump into something at a low speed. Um, but because they are rigid, they could shatter in a hard enough impact. By surrounding them with this foam, you are going to ensure that this thing can take a massive amount and quantity of hits and still stay flying. Now, this is a budget setup, make no mistake. It has a generic you know, electronic speed controller, flight controller, and video transmitter combo in there has this sort of generic uh, antenna at the back. And if we take this top plate off to take a peek inside, um, we can connect this camera connector. I do like that they have left that for us. That makes this completely um, able to be removed. And you see that you have a lot of space in there. This is a 20 by 20 stack that they've used, including the video transmitter on top. You can kind of see the flight controller under there and the ESC. And here is the plug that comes included um, to be able to connect the receiver on here. And all I have done is just uh, 3M mounted tape this XM plus receiver at the bottom and just let the antennas go at the top. I could design some antenna holders for that. But for this, because these are so protected, this will probably be just totally fine. It does have a fairly nice um, 3D printed antenna holder that comes uh, pre-installed for you. These uh, XT60 are not anchored down in any way, so I might take a zip tie and attach them to this rear standoff right here just for a little strain relief if they ever do get yanked in a crash. I am not a particular fan of these camera plates that are used. Not because these are bad at all, but it's just not something that I prefer to use on any of my builds. And the reason why, as you can see, is a little bit fiddly to get this back on there. Um, I would prefer a printed camera mount that the camera would just stay up at the front if I were to do work on this, but it's not a big deal. It has 1408 4000 kV motors that you can run comfortably on a 4S battery. It's a top mount craft like most freestyle or Cinewoop styles are going to be. comes with a nice uh, battery pad right here and a generic strap. This comes with a set of Dow Bullnose props, so the 3045R. Um, these are perfectly serviceable. One thing that I really like over some of the more expensive Cinewoop setups is that this uses a legit 3 inch prop. I don't know what's up with those shin drones things um, that they use a prop that you have to like either buy a special cinema prop for or take a three inch or a five inch prop and cut it up with a set of toenail clippers like what's up with that like did the guy just not have a set of calipers when he was designing the original Cinewhoops? I don't know we all do owe these designs to you know that shin guy but I mean I don't know about that 
Um, so I really do like that you don't have to have special props. You don't have to cut props. This comes um, set up for this. The low price of this thing for the kit that you build yourself, I believe it's like $110 to $120. And for this version that's already built for you with the foam, it's like $120 to $140. So these are an exceptional value. And I don't think that you really need maximum amount of performance if you're flying a Cinewhoop. There's no need for success, guys. I, in my opinion, now you can do that. You can spend $400 on a Cinewhoop easy, not counting the $400 camera that you might strap on here. But I think you might as well only spend $120 to $140 right because this is not going to be doing power moves this is not going to be doing performance moves this is not going to be racing it's not going to be bando bashing you're going to be flying low and slow and smooth and what you need is a frame design that allows you to accomplish that with the ducks now all these cine whoops are going to have a bit of prop wash uh, but the tune on this you know it's fine like you know stock beta flight you can really try to tune all the wiggles but what i really suggest is that you learn how cine whoops fly and learn how to fly around it which means that if you're descending you're going to want to do it very slowly as you're moving if you just stop and try to fall like this you're going to get the those prop wash wiggles and that's because of the duct design you're giving all that turbulent air as you're doing it so learn how to fly with one of these machines and you don't need to spend hours and hours and hours tuning yes you get the little jiggles out but there's no need for that there's no need to be spending countless hours now these things are loud and this one is no exception it's a little quieter than i thought it would be but it's still louder than your average three inch possibly even louder than a five inch and it's because you just get a lot of noise with this ductive design. Now this um, ducts do improve a little bit of lift performance and that also isolates um, any wind blowing. So you will really be able to get some very smooth and slow moving. You can notice that I have the camera angle very low on here, only about 15 degrees. Uh, because I would want to do that. Now, there are a variety of print options out there on Thingiverse for this. Um, so I'm going to show you some um, with a GoPro session or a run cam. I'll put the link or I'll put whichever one I'm using in the footage. But really good option. Um, a Cinewhoop, you know, as, a pair, as compared to like a premium freestyle or premium race drone is like a tool. This is a tool for a very specific type of shot. So treat it like that. Treat it like that as if you were a, <laughs> a cameraman on a film set. You're not gonna be pulling this out for fun types of acrobatic flying. You're gonna be pulling this out to get a specific shot. And for that type of shot, this is the best tool that you can have for the job. And if I'm going to go fly for fun, I'm going to fly one of my freestyle quads or my racing quads or my micro quads or any of the other little things that are coming out here. And so that's why I don't think you really need to be breaking the bank on builds like this. What do you think in the comments, guys? I have built the Ethex Cinerat, which I really like how that flies a little bit better than this. But that build costs more than double of this. And just for getting smooth shots, is it really necessary? I don't know. What do you think? Thanks, guys. Thank <laughs> you.